sing to him. And uh, the songs today were sung to him. Blessed be your name. Oh, my goodness. I was like ready to come out of my skin over here. It was fantastic. Um, Hi. Hi. My name is Pastor Brian uh, Detweiler. I'm from Center City Church in Altoona. I bring you greetings from from the church, from Pastor Jim and Jess. Um, We love you guys. And uh, we are family with you guys, and I hope you know that. And um, they send their love, they send their greetings, and uh, they sent me. (laughs) So, um, you know, so, you know, hello from them. Um, I want to thank Pastor Laura for reaching out, and um, I just want to honor her, too. Um, She is a treasure. And um, I know that you guys know that, but I just want to reiterate it to you. She's a treasure. Treat her well. And um, this is Pastor Appreciation Month. And I know, listen, I, I know Pastor Laura, have known her long enough to know that she would say, I don't need anything. Um, you don't have to do anything. Listen, you, I'm just telling you, you should lavish her um, with love. And, and you might say, well, I don't have money to get a gift card or anything like that. She understands that. But a, a simple note or a card that says, I appreciate you, and I love you, and I thank you for your sacrifice will go a long way. Because I'm telling you, when, when people give me cards or give me little notes, I keep every one of them because they're special to me. And on days when she's feeling down, I guarantee you she will pull from those and pull strength from those, from you guys. So I'm just exhorting you guys, love on her. Love on her, throw it on her, you know, just cover her with love and make sure that, and listen, not just this month. I mean, it's good that we set aside time to say, I mean, I'm missing, we're, we're missing Pastor Appreciation back at our church. We're, we're honoring Pastor Jim today, and uh, gosh, we were just sitting here talking about we hate being away because we love our pastor, and we love to uh, to tell him that, and that he knows that, and we support him, and uh, we miss that, but um, we'll, we'll get a chance to do that, too. And um, But thank you for letting us come. I brought um, Rick and Dan with me today. They are my brothers, and um, they are special, special guys to me. And so thank you, um, church, for being so nice, <laughs> so welcoming. Um, literally, from the moment we walked in the door, you guys were fantastic. And that is a mark. Um, of the the personality of Jesus, when you can welcome people in. You know, Jesus welcomed everybody. And I've heard it said, you know, from the pulpit today, everybody's welcome here, right? Everybody's welcome. Um, you know, when, it, when the rubber meets the road, do you really mean that? You know, like, we, we are in a church where we're in downtown Altoona, in the, in the heart of the city, and uh, we get a lot of uh, people who are homeless, who have slept out in the streets and, you know, are, are in rough shape. Um, but our church loves on them like no other, and, um, and it's almost confusing to them because they come in and think, what in the world's going on? Like, I didn't expect to be treated like that. I didn't expect to be welcomed like that. But I think that's the heart of Jesus. You know, remember when, when he said, uh, of what about the banquet? You know, prepare a banquet, go out and invite people to come, and nobody came. And he said, okay, go out into the hedges and the highways. Go out where, where the people are rejected. Go out there because they'll come. Invite them. I mean, this might be Pastor Jim coming right now. The helicopter's <laughs> landing. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is that Pastor Laura coming home? That, <laughs> oh, oh, that's life flight. Okay. Oh, that's not a good sound then. That's not a good sound. Um, I, I want to make one special announcement, or not announcement, but I want to recognize somebody special. My daughter drove up here all the way from Alabama to, for service. No, I'm just kidding. She's, she's visiting from Alabama, but she came here today to be with me, her and Caitlin. This is my daughter, Madison. Go ahead and stand up, Maddie, and say hi. So, yeah. So, love her. She's been here for the last two weeks, and uh, you know, just got to love on her, and I'm so glad. I, you, you know, when your kids grow and they move away, you're so proud. You're so proud of them. Um, 
But man, when they get close, it's like you want to you want to gobble up every moment that you can get because you know they're, <laughs> they're going to go away again. Um, but that's what we're supposed to do, right? The Bible says train up a child in the way they should. That means they, they need to go. And, uh, or that means they're going to go. They're going to go. And so, you know, we've got to train them right. You're right? Correct? Amen. Listen, I'll, I'll show you how good God is. Um, I was sitting here before worship, and the Lord gave me this, these scriptures, Psalms 34, 1. You probably know this, 1 through 4. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. That speaks to, you know, my soul. Our soul is our mind, will, and emotions, right? My soul shall boast, make its boast in the Lord. We're supposed to speak about what God is doing in our lives. We're supposed to talk about it because the reason is because the humble will hear of it and be glad. Right? Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Praise the Lord. Um, I believe that today we have magnified the Lord already. Already. I was standing there thinking, man, if we put the check box beside today's service, I could already feel, uh, I could already leave feeling God's presence here. And, um, and it's so good, so good. So um, I want to talk to you just briefly today few moments um, about soil, about dirt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guys like dirt. I have a, I have a son. Uh, he's actually a stepson, but um, I call him my son. He's in my house, and uh, he loves dirt. And um, he would probably eat it if I would let him, uh, but he can't do that. And um, I'm constantly <laughs> saying, like, oh, and you got to wash your hands, dude. You can't. You can't just play like that and then come in and just touch everything, you know. But he loves dirt. We're going to talk about dirt today. Um, I want to, um, you know, in in preparing for today, I was reminded um, in Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 20, where Peter and John um, were speaking, and they said, we cannot but speak uh, the things which we've seen and heard. I, I can come and talk to you about a lot of things um, that I might not have experience in, and that might sound good, but I don't have um, authority, I guess, if, if I want to say it right. I don't have the experience, so I don't have the authority to talk about it to where I could share it with passion, right? But I can talk to you about soil. I'm not a farmer, um, but I've done my homework. I've planted some flowers, and so... I've had my hands in dirt, so I, I can speak to some things. I mean, I can speak to, to failing um, in certain areas. You know, like when, when you plant flowers, do you, do you guys know that you have, you have to water them? And that's important. And, um, you know, they haven't invented a, a, oh, yes, they have invented a, a waterless flower. It's called a weed. LAUGHTER <laughs> Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about weeds a little bit, but um, I, I was doing a little, I just, I always want to do a little homework before I come, and, and so I just want to say, this is, this is CrossCut's 15th year. That's, that's amazing. Let me, so I want to say happy birthday to you guys. Like, that's awesome. That's awesome. God is doing something. And listen, God's not done. He's not done. And um, so I want to speak to you. I want to tell you. I want to exhort you, dream, keep dreaming, dream again, because as beautiful as the, the videos were, I look up here and I see a beautiful drum set, and I see a keyboard, and I see a guitar, dream, because when I was praying, I, I said, God, show me the stage with singers and musicians on it, and I could see it, so you just keep praying, you just keep asking God, send them, God, send them, because he will. Listen, words are powerful. Words are powerful. If you say, Lord, send them, he, he's going to. And, um, and if there's anybody sitting in this room that has musical talent and you say, well, that's not for me, I'm telling you, it's time to, to, you know, to shake the rust out of your joints a little bit and just start dreaming. Just start going for it. Amen? Amen. All right. All right, I'll shut up. 
Um, 15 years, that's awesome. And um, gosh, I, I was here with you guys. I don't know, some of you may remember me. I was here, it was, it was almost a year ago. Uh, it was November that I was here with you guys. And um, man, I, I can't believe that it's been a whole year. I, so I just want to say real quick too, and then I'll get into my message. So you know, um, I, I was here for Wilf's funeral and sat right here with Pastor Jim. And um, Pastor Jim said, it was 12.03, and he said, uh, I remember looking down at my watch. He said, um, we need to remember to pray for Pastor Laura every day because, um, I mean, my goodness, they, they were married for 39 years, right? This would have been year 40. And um, I remember looking down. It was 12.03, and I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark this moment. And um, Rick and, uh, and I, uh, and, the, and you guys mem- mem- remember the other Rick that, that came with us, every day, every day at 12.03, we pray for Pastor Laura, and we pray for this church. So you need to know that you're covered. And I'm not saying that, listen, I'm not saying that for accolades. I don't mean that. I'm just saying we are in this thing together. And, and distance means nothing to God. And even though we're down the mountain, and you guys are up the mountain, we love you guys. And we pray for you guys. We pray that, I mean, listen, it's, it's the same God. We're only separated by 30 miles, you know, or roughly 30 miles. But we're not separated in the spirit. And we pray and lift you guys up every single day. So you, you need to know that. We're connected. We're connected. There's kingdom connection. Amen. All right, so we're going to talk about soil, and I promise I won't keep you long. Um, I, I, uh, <laughs> I just want to brag on somebody for a second. Richard came up, and, um, and, he, and he shared that they have to slip out early today. And, and I just want to say, and I'm going to talk more about this in my message, but I just want to say what that shows me. I, actually, from the time I walked in here, God was showing me hearts. He was showing me your heart position. And, um, and I told Richard, but I just want to say, like, his heart position was, listen, we have to slip out. I don't want you to think that it's your message. <laughs> and I thought, well, hold on, hold on to that because you haven't heard me yet. So it may be, I mean, or it may be my delivery. Or maybe you'd be like, this guy stinks. I'm out. And, uh, but I, I appreciate that because what that showed me was his heart. Like, he didn't want to offend, right? He didn't want to, he didn't want somebody to say, why is he leaving? Or, or interrupt or disrupt my thought process while I'm speaking. And, um, and that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. And, uh, and we're going to talk about that. Kingdom view of soil. We're going to touch on a common subject, farming or planting. Um, you guys know this passage. It's Matthew chapter 13. If you want to turn there. We're going to read some scripture. We're going to get down through some things. Um, I'm going to plow through some things relatively quickly because um, I want to get somewhere, right? When we go on a drive, it's because we want to get somewhere, right? Uh, We were joking about that on the way up here. Um, Rick, uh, and I'm just going to pick on Rick just for a second. Rick was telling stories. When Rick would tell a story, he would slow down. His foot would come off the gas. And Dan, Dan said, how long is this story going to last? He said, because we got to get there. And, uh, and so when Rick would stop telling a story, we, we would go fast. I'm just, I'm just busting off. These guys are fantastic. But we're, we're going somewhere today. Amen? We're going to go somewhere. So we're going to talk about soil, and we're going to talk about seed, and we're going to talk about the sower. Um, using a common image from his day, Jesus tells a story about a farmer's field that says a lot about spiritual growth. He, ta- he tells about the dangers of not cultivating your spiritual life, and he suggests what happens when you do take care of your spiritual soil. This parable um, is one of the biggest ones that he, G- you know, Jesus shared 40 parables. You know what a parable is? A parable is a story where he tells a kingdom truth in a, in a format that people could understand, they could relate to, right? And, and you know what's funny? If you read in through Matthew or even Luke, I mean, he says, I'm sharing these things because I'm concealing 
truth. Now, and I, you know, when I was reading that, I thought, why would you be concealing truth? And it's, he's not concealing truth to say, I don't want Richard to know what I'm talking about. What he's saying is, I'm concealing it in such a way that you can't just hear it and get it. You've got to really pay attention. He's saying, I want you to perk up. I want you to, you know, he even says in verse 9, he that has an ear to hear, let him hear, right? Um, he wants you to perk up and lean in and listen to what he's trying to say here. Um, and he actually said to his disciples, this, this parable was so big. I mean, he actually said, like, guys, listen, this is huge. If you, don't, if you can't get this one, you're not going to get any of them. You know, so, so pay attention. Um, and listen, what Jesus taught here is actually happening in this room right now. This parable is at work in this room right now in every person. You might say, well, that's, how can that be? Like, you know, maybe you were just invited here and, uh, and you think, well, that's not true because I don't understand. I, I'm telling you, you're going to see every person in this room. This all points um, right at you. Um, our, my goal today is to identify all the, the soils in our lives and the different factors that enhance or inhibit spiritual growth. And, and then we're going to learn how to affirm one another and encourage each other in Christian growth because it's important and commit to uh, addressing obstacles that we face. So Matthew 13, 1 through 9, here we go. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. Um, let me pause right here just for a second. So Pastor Laura is there right now, right? So this is the, so there at the northern part of this, this scripture here is the northern part of the sea. I'm sure she might not be there at this moment, but I'm sure she's seen it. And so what happens is at the northern end of the shore, the mountainside actually goes up. It almost creates like a, a perfect amphitheater for people to sit because you might, because it says a great multitude, right? Great multitudes. I mean, so uh, there could have been thousands of people. Did you ever stop and think, like, how in the world? I mean, we've got microphones now, right? So that's an easy way to speak to people. But how in the world did Jesus, how could he speak to thousands of people and be heard? Well, th I mean, uh, if you know things about sound waves, sound bounces off of water and travels fast on water. So he would step into a boat, and the boat would go out a little bit. So he used water as kind of a carrier for his voice that went up the hillside, and people could hear it. Um, isn't that fascinating? And um, so that's how he was able to speak to a lot of people at that, at that place there. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell uh, by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Um, you know, it's funny, my Bible says the parable of the sower, and it might be more accurately described as the parable of the soils, because what Jesus is describing is how is the seed being received, right? It's really not so much about the sower, but about the seed. How is the word received by us? Uh, the parable is one of few in Scripture that includes a lengthy explanation, Jesus parallels what happens to the seeds in the field with how people receive his word. For some people, the word never sinks in because the wicked one, uh, in verse 19, uh, says the wicked one snatches away the word that was sown in them. Others receive the word with joy, but their faith is shallow and they fall away when pressure builds or they feel the squeeze we often talk about. How many people have ever felt the squeeze? You know, you just, you can't really pinpoint one thing. You just know that you feel like all these things are coming at you at one time. Like, what is that squeeze, right? We talk about that a lot um, down home. Well, there's, there's a reason for that. 
Still others accept the word, but other worries, deceits, desires choke out the word. Finally, those whose lives are prepared to hear the word receive it, and it grows and multiplies. Jesus chose to teach in parables, short stories. Um, this method compels the listener to think. Um, when the farmers of that day, when they would spread seed, so it says, um, uh, behold, a sower went out to sow. They had large sacks. They didn't have, you know, the planting abilities that we do now as farmers. Um, they wore large sacks that would be so full, and they would just reach in and throw, you know, out into the field, right? And, of course, you can imagine, um, has anybody ever spread grass seed in, in your yard? You know, when you reach in, some of it falls out and just falls, and you find it later, you know, like, you think, oh, okay, grass seed fell there. I didn't intend for it to fall there, but it fell there. Um, so it's kind of get that mindset. I always liken it to, uh, do you remember when uh, the Altoona mirror would be passed years ago? Did anybody ever pass the Altoona mirror? Or, or at the paper? You wore those big old paper sacks, you know, and you just reach in, throw it out, you know. So it's kind of like that. You reach in, you grab seed, and you throw it out. That's the, the vision or visual that I want you to to get the seed, of course, here represents the gospel being spread everywhere. Who's the sower represented in this uh, scripture? Christ. Yeah, sure, Christ. Um, the soil represents us or our hearts, how we receive the word. Sometimes life's happenings shape our lives in certain ways, or I should say, um, we allow it to happen or shape us. The point is, Jesus is telling us that it's God's desire that the word of God go out and land in every heart and that a decision is being made. He, he wants seed to be sown, right? We should always pray. We should be in the habit, um, and hear me, we should be in the habit of praying all the time when we read, when we listen to messages, when we're at church, etc. God, make my heart soft. Make my heart good soil. Because seed is coming, and we want the seed to go down into good soil, right? And um, so we should pray that often. God, make my heart soft. Make me good soil to receive the word. Here's the irony. Um, we can be both soil and sowers, right? What did Jesus say in Matthew 28, verse 19, when, when he was leaving this earth? What did he say? Therefore, go... And do what? Make, disi make disciples of all nations, right? And teach them, right? Jesus, Jesus is saying, listen, I, I'm a sower, but I want you to sow too. So even though we receive, we can be both, right? We receive the word, we're soil, but we also are supposed to sow wherever we're at, at work, at the grocery store. I was at a, I was at a wedding last night, and... Um, I always pray, Pastor Jim has taught me very well, that wherever I go, always ask the Lord, what's my assignment? Because if you are a child of God, there's no idle time. Wherever you go, God can use you if you allow him. And so, and listen, it is not because, I promise you, it is not because I'm a pastor. It, it, I'm talking, to, I mean, we're, I'm just like you guys. I have a family, you know, I've got kids, I've got kids. I'm just like you, but we can be used wherever we go if we'll allow God. So I was at a wedding yesterday and said at the beginning, you know, nobody was there. God, what's my assignment today? Put me in front of who I'm supposed to talk to about you. And he did. I was walking back um, to grab another soda. I was, I was thirsty. I was walking back, and a guy grabbed my arm, and he's like, hey. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And so I stood there and talked to him for a little bit, and then his wife came over, and we were talking about different things, and he brought up a subject. Remember what I said? You know, Peter and, and John said, I, I can't help but speak of the good things that Christ is doing. I can't help but talk about him. He, he asked me about something that's going on in, in, in our family, in our lives. And um, I, thought, I felt like, in the visual, I felt like the, door, the, like the Lord went, Reep, opened the door. I thought, well, I've got a choice. I can either walk through it or... I could get my, you know, get my soda and get back to doing what I was doing. But I knew. I knew that that was my moment. So I just stood there and I said, okay, I'll talk to you about this, but I have to share this with And to my knowledge, I don't know if he's a Christian or not. I don't know if he loves the Lord or not. I don't know that. 
But I knew, uh, you know, we have to get past the point of worrying about offending somebody. Now, listen, I'm not talking about going out and, and pounding on somebody with the word and say, you know, and saying like, thus, you're going to go to hell if you don't, you know, accept the I'm not talking about that. But we can share the love of Christ. Jesus said, they'll know you're my disciples by your love for one another. That's right. So we love people. People will say, oh, he, they've got it. He, this guy knows Christ. So I said to him, look, the only way that I can tell you is I have to tell you it's a total God story. And then I started explaining it to him. And I told my wife last night when I got home, and she knows who they are. And uh, when I got home, I told Amy, I said, Amy, I said, I got to share this story. This happened at the wedding. And I said, when I told them, they both stood there like this. Like literally, they were, they were blank for like a couple seconds. And I, and I said, you guys okay? And they're like, no, this is unbelievable. And I said, well, that's why I said it's, it's God because it is unbelievable. But God, right? God does the unthinkable. He can do anything. And um, so I was a sower at that point. I was, you know, they didn't even know it. I'm standing there just sprinkling seed in their life. Sprinkling seed, like, come on, Lord. You know, like send somebody by to water it, you know, and then send somebody come by and harvest it. You never know. You never know what you share, how it might touch somebody's heart. Amen. Um, you Listen, you don't have to be a pastor to be a sower. I know I shared that. You could be the wife of an unsaved man. You could be the husband of an unsaved woman. Um, or maybe you have unsaved kids and you want them in the kingdom of heaven with you. You can be a sower wherever you're at. Um, I want to share a quick story. Um, I, I love telling stories. I love stories. I think God sprinkles them in my life, you know, because that's, that's who I am. It's how I relate, right? Jesus taught by stories. I, um, last Sunday, a week ago today, I was walking, um, I took pictures for somebody and was walking down back to my house and was walking past a house and there was a, uh, I could hear somebody talking um, at this house, but I couldn't see them. It was, a, it was a female voice and I looked over and here was an elderly lady um, who was in her flower bed. There was a piece of driftwood um, that was sitting there and she was like in the driftwood, like her knees were were higher than her uh, than her torso, and, and she was kind of like rocking, trying to get out of it, and I could tell she was frustrated, and she couldn't see me, and I said, hey, you know, can I help you, and, um, you know, she just kind of like shouted back over her head, she goes, no, I'm fine, <laughs> and I thought, no, no you're not, <laughs> I can see that pretty clearly, and, uh, and I said, are you sure, like, I can come help you again, and she goes, no, I'm good, she said, my husband's in the house, and um, he can help me if I need help. And I thought, and at that moment, I thought, oh, she's kind of scared because she can't see me. And she doesn't know, right? And, and so she, she said about her husband to kind of like shoot me along. And I said, okay, all right. You know, so I started walking. And, and it was like God was like, what, where are you going? Like, what are you doing? And so I walked back and I said, okay, listen, can I at least, can I go get your husband? And she went, come in the gate. And so I, I come in the gate, and I walked around, and, and I come over to her, and, and uh, she looked up at me, and she said, I just need a hand up. And I said, I, I know. <laughs> so I lifted her up, and, and we stepped out, and we were talking a little bit, and she said, I appreciate your help, you know, and I said, sure. And she said, why, well, you know, I've been having trouble with my balance. I've been falling, and, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going on. I've been breaking bones and, and this and that. And I said, oh, my. I said, well can I pray for you? And, um, and she was like, oh, yes. And she just grabbed my hands. And I was like, all right. And so I started praying, and she started speaking in tongues. And, and I, was in the, I was in the middle of my prayer, like, dear Lord, you know, I pray. Right, and, and I was like, hold on, hold on. Are you spirit-filled? And she went, yes. And I went, me too. <laughs> and she was like, oh, then let's pray for my husband. Because he doesn't know Jesus. And I was like, oh, okay, God, I see what you're doing. And so we did. We prayed. We prayed for a husband. God, God, open a door. I mean, I said, I said, I'm your neighbor. I don't know if you know, but I, I live around, you know, I have the crib. And she's like, oh, you're, um, you're a pastor. And I said, yeah. And she said, I pray for you every day. And I was like, what? And she said, I passed your house. She said, I, I, had, I had heard that you were a pastor. She said, I walk my dog. I pray for you every day. And I was like. 
just wrecked me, you know, but I thought, okay. And she said, oh, I get it now. She said, this was for this. She said, I needed this. And so God let that happen. And she's crying. Tears are coming down. And I said, oh, I said, I have a feeling we're going to be seeing a lot more of each other, you know. And she said, yeah, me too. Me too. But we have to be open to sow and seed whenever he says do it. Listen, I could have been in a hurry and said, oh, but I got things to do. I've got this and that. But God said right now, we've, we've got to be, pastor has preached and preached at us to be instant obedient. When God speaks, you do it. Don't give a thought to it because, because we could be like that seed that falls on the hard soil that the enemy comes and takes it right away. And it doesn't even get a chance to get in the ground. Amen. All right, so I'm going to talk to you real quick. The meaning of the four soils. Number one, the mission is found in verses one through three. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Great multitudes were there. And we can find it in verse three. Then he spoke many things to them in parables with saying, behold, a sower went out to sow. He had a mission. His mission was to go out and sow seed. That was his mission. You and I have a mission. It is our job to sow seed. We're supposed to do that. We're supposed to, if you say, well, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. We're going we're gonna to talk about that. It's called discipling. We need to learn. We need to disciple, you know, um, one another. We need to disciple those. If somebody comes to me, we had a young man in our men's group that said, listen, I have a question. You know, when I read in the Bible where it says that, you know, when we get to heaven, God the Father is going to be there, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, like, is that Three people? Is it three different? Is it one? Or, or how is that? You know, and, and those of us that, that have been in the Word for a while, we just looked at him and said, yes. <laughs> and he was like, oh, okay. Like, I'm, I'm done. But it's true, right? I mean, he's three and one. We can't wrap our head around that because God exists outside of time where we are in time. We only can see flesh and blood. We can't really see in the spirit. We'll know when we get there. When we get to heaven, we're going to be like, oh, okay. Now I get it. Now it makes sense to me. So we have a mission. Number two, the placement of the seed. Verse four. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. The wayside. The hard, compact area, trampled. It's very, very hard um, nothing can penetrate it. Um, you know, we might, this is, this is the, the soil or the heart that says, I don't get it. They can, they can see, um, I mean, I could tell you about things that are happening in our life, and some people would say, I don't get it. I don't see it. I don't see what God's doing in your life. Well, that's, that's because their heart is, is, is hard. It's not open to receiving the seed. They they're not there yet, Right? And, and let me just say, I mean, when Jesus talks about these, they're not permanent. Do you understand that? When he talks about hard soil, hard hearts, we, we, you know, we heard that term, hard-hearted. Um, it's, it's not permanent. It can be changed. Jesus can do a- anything, right? Um, you know, it's not that God is withholding seed. It's that their heart isn't in a place to receive it, Right? So God is generous. I mean, he's, he's certainly giving the seed. Um, number, so we talked about the mission, the placement, the reception is number three. That's verses five and six. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. We want to make sure that our hearts are serious about it. Worship is great. Worship today was fantastic. And, and praising the Lord is, is awesome. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. But before we ever come into that place, God, make my heart receptive to what I'm about to partake of. We need to prepare. So listen, it starts before. I'm just going to, I'm going to pastor you for a second. It starts before you get in this building. Do you know that? So, so when you come in here, there should be an explosion of praise and worship because it started at home. See, our routine at our house is, and, and I, I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm as, I'm as normal as they come. I'm just a normal dude. 
But I know, I, my daughter's back here like, well, we can talk later. But our routine, when we get up in the morning, is him first. We, we put a song on. We, you know, it's typically, I mean, music moves people. You know, amen? It really, really does. And um, we put a song on, and we start to cultivate the atmosphere. God, do something today. What are you going to do today? I can't wait to get into your presence, to get into the house of God around fellow believers and link faith and worship you and say, God, come, do something in our midst. But, but it starts at home. And then we, you know, then, then my wife and I will share. And, uh, you know, and we'll talk about what we feel like. Maybe, maybe God will do this today. Maybe God, you know, will work in this person's life. Or, and then we just, we just stay in an attitude of prayer. And so then what happens when we get to church, we're already there. We've already begun to cultivate and, and make that atmosphere alive so that when we get here, we don't have to crank it once we get into the sanctuary. And I get it. Listen, I get it. We have kids, and um, things happen on the way to church, right? You know, they, they sneak a candy bar, and it's all melted now all over their pants. And, you know, like you've got to address. I get it. Things happen. I'm not saying anything about it, but I'm saying when you start at home, you don't have to, you don't have to crank it up when you get here. You're not behind. And um, we've got to do that. We've got to cultivate our hearts before actually engaging. Um, Stony places, verses 5 and 6, stony places. They did not have, the Bible says they did not have much earth. They had some. They did have some dirt. They had a layer. Maybe it was only an inch or two, but they did have some, but it was a thin layer. So the seed went in. The seed germinated. In fact, it germinated faster than normal. It was quick. The soil, you know, here, it's warm. It's on the rock. It's, you know, it's, it's up. It's higher. The water that hits it just keeps the soil wet. It doesn't go anywhere. The rock isn't seen because of the soil. See, the rock's there that's preventing it from going deep. It sprouts up so quick. The nutrients are there. Water's there. Soil's there. And the sun is there. It's perfect, right? It's perfect. There's an explosion of life. But later, the farmer comes by, and it's wilted and flopped over. Why? Jesus is telling us here that there are uh, there's no root. There, there are those who make decisions for Christ. They have a Bible. They start reading it. They listen to Christian music. They get excited about coming to church. They make posts on Facebook and Instagram. They shoot up like a skyrocket. They're just so on fire. They're, these people, they're fun to be around. They're super duper Christians. They're on fire. And then maybe two months later, the fire has started to dwindle. And if we're lucky, they haven't walked away from the faith. Why? Why? Well, because there's, there's rock beneath the soil, right? And um, it can't get depth, and so then there's no roots. And, and sometimes we as a church, if we're not careful, we don't, we don't pull them in and start to disciple them and say, listen, you're going to go through some things, and this is what you're going through, and walk with them. Put your arm around them and say, you know, they say, hey, why am I so tempted by this? You know, I accepted Christ. Shouldn't I be over this? Well, you're still human, right? You're still human. I mean, we're, we're flesh and bones. I mean, there's addictions that happen in the flesh that we think should just disappear, and they don't always just disappear. Well, you gotta walk with some, you got to walk beside some people. I mean, I, there's, there's a gentleman that I'm uh, working with, walking with, who is still struggling with alcohol, and he gave his heart to Christ. And, and, and he needs somebody. Listen, I'm not pampering him or saying like, oh, that's okay. No, I'm not, I'm not telling him that. I'm saying we can get through this. We're going to get through this. So if you fail, if you fall, get back up. Let's start again. Let's start again. And let's start again. Let's, start, let's keep going and close the gap from the times that you, that you trip up. Because eventually you're going to overtake that and you're not going to trip up anymore. But, but discipling takes time. It takes time, and we've got to be willing to do that. You know, and, and part of the problem with, with us nowadays, and I'll just say the church in general, is that we're so busy. We're so busy. If we're not careful, if we're not careful, we will become so busy, we'll, we'll be just like the world. 
We're, we're just, we don't have any time for anything. We don't have any time. Read my Bible. How, where am I going to fit that in? I mean, I've got to take the kids to practice. I've got to cook supper. We've got a meeting tonight at the church. Um, you know, I've got to prepare for midweek service. I've got this. I've got that. We have a worship practice Thursday. This and that. Where am I going to find? How can I? I can't possibly read the Bible. If we're not careful, listen, I, that's not, that shouldn't suffer. It's how can I fit everything else in around, my God time doesn't get compromised. Everything else has got to get shoved somewhere, you know. If the kids are late to practice, I mean, we call the coach, we text the coach, you know, we're, we're, we're decent. But, but these things happen. If we're not careful, we, you know, we can just be just like the world. We can go to church, but we can be without God. Are you hearing me? And we don't want to be like that, right? We don't want to be like that. Um, you always want to be around Christians. Listen, you always want to be around Christians who've gone through some stuff. Because they can, they can talk to you about victories. The, the two guys that I brought with me today, they can tell you about victories. They've gone through some stuff. They've gone through a lot of stuff. And I'm telling you, they're sitting here um, as, as an example of how good God is and how patient he is and how loving and how he just keeps working. And um, their stories, you know, if each one of them told you their stories, you, you would be like, whoa. But God. God is so good. And, um, and so now what these two guys are doing is they're helping other people that are struggling and walking through it. And they're saying, come in. Let me tell you some things. You can get through this. You can get through this, right? We need to be around people that have gone through some stuff. That's discipleship. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Listen to me. Crosscut Church. When difficulties come... I just I was listening to Pastor Laura's message from a couple weeks ago, and she was talking about difficulties. When difficulties come, don't pull back, because that's what we have a tendency to do, right? Has the enemy ever whispered this to somebody? Oh, you know, if you just pull back a little, I mean, if you didn't lean in so hard to church, I mean, things would get easier. It'd get easier for you. That, listen, that's such a lie. It, what happens is you're so close to breakthrough that he wants to discourage you from stepping through that, um, you know, that we end up pulling back instead of pushing through. My, my encouragement to you is push through. Nothing is worth, man, I just had a, a talk with, um, with one of my stepsons about nothing is easy um, if it's worth it. If it's worth it, it's going to cost you some pain. But the problem is we don't want to go through pain anymore. We, we, want, we want to get somewhere without experiencing some things. Do you know the butterfly? Um, do you know that, I mean, I heard this story this past week. Do you know that if you would tear open the cocoon of a butterfly, of a caterpillar that's becoming a butterfly, if you would tear open the cocoon to help it out, do you know that you will actually you actually kill it. You, you will make it to the point where it can't survive out in the world because it needs to experience the pain of breaking through that to gain strength to be able to live. And so if you help it out, you're actually hurting it. And, and we have to, some of the things that we're going through, I'm just telling you, we have to go through them to gain strength. And you might think, well, why in the world am I doing this? Well, listen, one of the things that I've always learned is uh, if I'm going through something, if it's not for me right now, oh, okay, Lord, this is for somebody coming up. I'm going to be speaking to somebody very soon that's going through this, and I'm going to be able to say, oh, you can get through it. You know how I can get through it? Because I just walked through it right here. Look what God did. And so we help one another out. That's how we, that's how we encourage one another. It's, you know, verse 21, it's, you know, it talks about, verse 21, look there real quick. It said, yet he has no root in himself because he endures only for a little while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Because of the word. Sometimes because of the word. We stand up for Christ. A new believer comes. We stand up for Christ. And immediately people start poking holes in it and start punching at it. 
and saying, oh, but I know you. I, I knew you even before. Like, you, you're what? You're a Christian? Come on. You know, let's, come on, let's go get a beer. Listen, and so what happens is because of temptation, people, people stumble. We've got to be there for them. We've got to help them. Um, whatever hardships we've gone through in life, we can determine that we're either going to go through the rest of our lives bitter and angry and miserable, or we can let our lives be transformed by the power of Jesus into great victories like these two right here. Trials must come. They must come so that we can grow. If they don't come, you know, that's, you know what that's called? You know, if you, wanna, if you really want to live where there's no trials and there's no pain or anything, you know what that's called? That's called heaven, and you're not there yet. We're not, gonna, we're not there yet. So while we're here, Jesus said, in this life, you will have, you will. Yeah. So we know that. All right. I'm going to skip ahead here because I really feel like the Lord wants to hit something. So I am almost done here. You ready? You guys. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, God. He's almost done. All right. Number four, longevity. Verse seven. Verse seven, longevity. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them out. Thorny soil. So we talked about hard soil, right? We know that hard soil, nothing can penetrate that. Um, rocky soil, you know, places that didn't have much soil. There was a little bit of dirt there, but not much. The rocks were hidden, right? We're going to talk about the rocks in a second. Um, thorny soil. What's a thorn? Paul speaks of a thorn um, in 2 Corinthians 12 as a messenger from Satan. Right, something that is just irritating him, right? Was it physical? Was it emotional? Was it spiritual? I, we don't know. But he talks about it as a messenger from Satan. So thorns are also weeds, right? So what's a weed? A plant of no value, usually growing in cultivated ground to the damage of the crop. Do you ever notice, like, when you plant flowers, do you, do you ever notice the weeds come up first before the plant? It's like, I didn't, I didn't plant you. Um, if we could... if if weeds were pretty, I'd never plant flowers. I'd just let weeds come up, right? There's so much spent, so much money spent, so much time. If you go into Lowe's, they've got all these products to kill weeds. Weeds come. Weeds come in your life, too. You've got to recognize that, right? We can go out in, the, in our garden and say, oh, that's a weed. I need to get rid of it. We either spray something on it, we pull it. Um, you try to grab it by the root, right? You can't just break it off because then it just shoots right back up the next day. Um, we've got to get rid of the weeds, right? There's a lot of attention being paid to weeds. And Jesus is saying the same thing here. What's the characteristics of a weed? They grow randomly. They grow first. They grow fast. They're numerous. They hog the water. Their roots go everywhere. And they grow more, uh, seemingly, they grow more than the intended plant. Hmm. Where do they come from? Uh, verse 37 to 42 tells us that they come from the evil one. And if you're a gardener, you say, yeah, I believe that. I, mean, I know they're from Satan. But um, in our lives, he plants them there. He puts weeds in our life because it says it grows up and it chokes it out. If we're not careful, things of this world, cares of this world will choke it out. And um, we can't allow that to happen. We can't allow that to happen. Um, habits, right? Things like that. Um, so now I want to talk to you about good soil. And here's where I want to end. Um, good soil. He starts early, right? Let's look at the farmer. He starts early. Even when it seems that there's no crop to grow, he begins to cultivate the ground. What does the word cultivate mean? To cultivate means to prepare for the raising of crops to foster the growth of, to encourage, and to further. Do you know that this whole message, when I say I want to encourage you, do you know that I've been cultivating your ground? I've been digging up a little bit and trying to make the soil soft so that when the word comes out, that it actually goes in and, and it doesn't just lay on top, that the enemy can't just come and take it, but it'll go deep and it'll take root. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to cultivate for you guys. But that's what the definition of cultivate. How do we cultivate our lives? By plowing. Um, just as the farmer plows his soil, so we must plow our hearts. 
plowing is painful to the dirt because those, those tines go in deep and they dig and they pull and they unearth what's underneath and they pop it to the top and they, and they mix the soil all up, but they're creating a space where seed can go. We have to plow. How do we plow our hearts? How do we do that? Plowing takes work. It's a, t- it's a concentrated effort to break up our usual appearance of things that we know. We've got to do something different. Sometimes we just got to do something different. Has anybody in here ever, but you just got sick and tired of being sick and tired? <laughs> right? Absolutely. Well, that, well, you've got to do something different. I was talking with a young man this past week, and he said, you know, I, I said, where are you at? You know, talk to me. And, uh, you know, because, he, you know, he's a young man, he's single, and he, he keeps saying, well, I know I'm not supposed to be here, I'm supposed to live somewhere else, and I mean, I feel that, I feel like I'm supposed to live, you know, in another town, and this and that, and I said, well, what are you doing? Well, I'm not doing anything. You know, he works from home, and uh, he said, but I'm not doing anything, I'm, you know, I'm, I take my dog for a walk, and, you know, he's, he coaches, and I mean, he's a great kid, he's a great kid, and I love meeting with him, but I had to, like, I I had to teach him how to start plowing. I said, you've got to do something different. You've either got to go to men's group or you've got to go to a young adults group, but you've got to do something different. He said, well, what's going to be there? You know, am I going to, you know. I said, well, I don't know. But you might meet somebody that knows somebody that wants to introduce them to you that could shift your trajectory a little bit. You'll never know unless you get there. You've got to do something different. You've got to start plowing. You've got to do something to get the ground um, accessible to seed. You can't just keep doing the same things over and over again and expect change to come. It's not gonna, it doesn't happen that way, right? Um, what do farmers do after plowing? They pick rocks, right? I, I used to live in Williamsburg, and farmers would pay the high school kids lots of money after they would plow to come out and pick rocks. Come out and pick rocks. And they, this is what they do. They'd go through with a, a trailer like that. You'd pick up these big rocks. Now, let me ask you a question. Isn't it funny that they plow, they pick the rocks, they plant, everything's fine. The next year when they plow again, why do they have to pick rocks again? Do rocks grow? <laughs> Listen, and so it is with our lives. We might think, where do the rocks come from? Remember the... Remember the, the rocky soil? There's some dirt there, but there's rocks there you can't see. Well, when we plow, we pull those rocks to the surface. You know, what are the rocks? The rocks are things that we need to address. We have to move them out of the soil of our heart or we can't receive seed. So sometimes, listen, we might be, uh, for instance, and again, I told you, like I'm, I'm just like you. I didn't really, you know, somebody told me, uh, I'm trying to think if it was Pastor Jim or somebody said, oh, you know, to me, like, oh, I think you might have a problem with anger. Me? I'm like the, I'm the most fun-loving person like you'd ever want to meet. And then uh, my wife and I go to Walmart, and we're picking up groceries, uh, grocery pickup, and I had my lights off, forgot to turn them back on, and we we pull out, and uh, we're coming out, we're talking, just, you know, grocery night's our date night. When you have kids, you understand that. I mean, that's, that's the simple truth. And um, we come out, and we're laughing, we're talking, and I, I come to this place, like, what's a stop? And this kid, uh, this young teenage kid pulls up a- in front of a car. He comes right in front of us, and he has a, a megaphone, you know, like one of those bullhorns, and screams at us, turn your lights on. Except he didn't say turn your lights on. He said turn your bleeping lights on. And... And kept going, and I, I'm telling you, like a switch. I ripped out behind him and was on his tail the whole way out. And we got on the boulevard, and I'm like, the whole way down, like, I'm like, I'm going to chase this kid down. <laughs> and I'm going to speak very fatherly to him. That's what I'm thinking. But my wife is, you know, Amy's sitting there here saying, Brian, what are you doing? Like, stop. Stop it. You know, and she's, and she finally yelled, Brian, stop it. What if he has a gun? And, um, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, my goodness, where did that come from? You know what it was? It was a rock. 
well, where did that, where did that, you know, like a farmer, where did that come from? Well, guess what? I had to deal with it. I mean, I repented right there. I repented to my wife. And I said, God, I don't want this in my life. I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want a, a situation like that where that would happen. Now, I was, I was offended. Let me just say, I was offended because of how he spoke in front of my wife. I know it's not like she has never heard that word before. I mean, come on, we're, we're human, right? We, we hear it all over the place. But I thought, you're not going to talk to my wife like that. And, uh, man, I was, I was mad. But I had to repent. God, get that rock out. Get that rock out. Sometimes we, do, we don't even know some things. We don't even know rocks are under there until we say, yeah, God, get the plow out. Plow my heart, you know. Create in me a clean heart, oh, Lord. And then he does. Things surface, and we're like, oh, wait. I, I, I ain't ready to deal with that one yet. Tuck that one back down in, you know. But listen, God is going to surface them because he wants you to deal with them. You have to deal with them because God's taking you somewhere. You're on a journey. Remember, you have a mission. The sower went out to sow. You're supposed to go out and sow. You may have to deal with something in your life because God wants you to help somebody else that's dealing with the very same thing. Maybe it was a, a mom wound. You know, I, I, I didn't realize for the longest time that I had mother wounds, mom wounds. I didn't know I had mom wounds. You know, I, I was, um, you know, I was, I was abused growing up, but I, th I thought I was able to shut all that out, like, oh, I'm, I'm okay. And then God started peeling back layers and revealing things, and I thought, oh, okay, oh, I've got to deal with these things. God does that because He loves you, because He wants you to grow, right? Um, I really feel like, and so I'm, I'm going to get ready to, to end here. I really feel like. Um, when I was praying this week, and listen, I purposely, I purposely did not ask Pastor Laura about anything going on in the church. I wanted to do my own, you know, listening to her sermons, looking at your pay, Facebook page, things like that. I, because I wanted, I wanted God to talk to me about the heartbeat of the church. And that God would give me something to give to you that would help you to, to go forward. And I, so I want to I leave you with this. It's time to disciple. It's time to start taking knowledge that you have and start passing it in. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, when I came through, you know, I wrote down some notes here. Hold on. When I came through the door, um, I met a, a, a wonderful lady at the front. She introduced, I know, is she in here somewhere? She's over here. Um, fantastic. Made me feel welcome right away. But when I came in here, Bob, you know, came right to me. And um, I thought, I like this guy. I mean, I like this guy. I mean, I like his personality. He's bubbly. I like this guy. And then I look on the screen, and I see that Bruce and Tammy are servants of the week. Now, first of all, I want to say that's honoring to say they're the servant of the week. Please don't, listen, when you do things like that in the body of Christ, please don't get a competitive spirit or competitive attitude like, I serve more than they do. You know what I mean? Like, I'm out here parking cars, or I'm holding the door. Like, I do more, and then you see them get rich. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know what you do? You start praying for them. God, thank you. Thank you that they're serving and that they're an example. Help me, Lord, to be just like them. How, how can I get involved? What can I do? Not because I want to outdo them, but because we're building the body of Christ here. Because we want to see unsaved people, we want to see lost people brought into the kingdom of God. That's why we do that. That's why we serve. Amen? How can I help Pastor Laura? You don't think she shoulders a lot? What can I do to help her? You know, <laughs> one of the things, so I have to write an email, and um, I, have to, I write it, I don't have to, I write an email every week, and I I tell Pastor Jim, this is, this is what I did. I mean, because he keeps me accountable, and it's good because he's stretching me too. And I tell him, this is what I did this week. This is what I've got coming up this week, and these are the things that I'm working on. And so I sent my email off this week, and I was like all proud. Yeah, boom, you know, boom, this is what I'm going to do. And he, he replies back, and, he's, and he wrote in red, how can I help Pastor Jim and Jess? And I was like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. 
Because honestly, before I do anything, I should think, how can I serve him? Listen, if, if you want to go up, you got to go down. The Bible talks about dying daily. And, 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 and we talked about it earlier. Some people don't want to die. They want to get better. They want things to change in their life. They want to be a leader. I had a guy approach me and say, you know what my goal is? I want to be a deacon in the church. And I said, okay, grab a towel and grab a wash basin and start washing feet. And he, and he looked at me and he's like, what do, you, what do you mean by that? And I said, Jesus said, the greatest will be the servant. You know, if you want to be if you want to be something of high esteem, you've got to learn to serve. And you've got to do it without, listen to me, without wanting an accolade, without needing feedback saying, good for you. I see what you did. That was awesome. You've got to do it without needing that. Listen, I, I have a neighbor who is, if I said his name, you would recognize it immediately. I'm not going to do that because we're being recorded. <laughs> but he's a great, great guy, super guy. And he's extremely wealthy. I mean, he has business all over the place. And he was going into the hospital for something. And, and I, you know, and he messaged me and said, listen, if we're away for a couple of days, this is why. And I said, can, can Amy and I come over and pray with you? And he said, no. He said, I understand that you're religious, but we're not. And my heart was kind of hurt by that. Because who says no to prayer, right? But my heart was kind of hurt by that. But I thought, you know, but Amy and I just thought, we can still pray. And it, does, it doesn't mean, just because he won't let us pray for him, like, I can still pray for him. I got in the car the other day, and um, I got, you know, got in the car, went to drive out. I looked over toward his house. And I said, God, I pray for him today. God, I just pray that you would bless him today, that you'd be with him, that he would heal quickly. And God, I pray that you would open a door that I could speak to him about the love of Christ, that somehow a door would open that I could do this. And you know what the Lord said? Before I even got to the end of my street, the Lord said, if I did that, if I opened the door and he gave his heart to Jesus, would you be okay with not saying a word about it? Because that would be a big notch in my belt if I could say, oh, I led this guy to Christ. He was saying to me, could, would you be okay with not saying a word? And I sat there and I thought, yeah, I would. Because it means more to me to see him in heaven than it does for me to be able to boast about leading uh, an affluent person to Christ. I, I believe that, that, listen, I believe that God is cultivating ground right now. And, and I want to speak. I really felt like the Lord um, spoke to me about the men of this church. And I want to say to you, I want to call out the men of this church. And trust me, I'm not doing it like calling out, like, I'm calling you out right now. I don't mean it that way. What I'm saying is, arise. Men, arise. I th I'm thankful that Bruce serves like that. But Bruce, it's got to be more than you. Is it Bruce? Oh, my gosh. I just had like. <laughs> I thought, woo, if it's not Bruce, I'm like in trouble. Um <laughs> But it's, listen, it takes more than him. It takes more than Bob. So let me just say to you guys, what you need to do, Paul had a Timothy, right? Paul had a Timothy, somebody that he poured into to raise up to say, I'm going to pass you the baton. You've got to take this on. Bob, you need somebody else to help you with camera. You've got to pull somebody up and say, I'm going to teach you camera because that will free you to do something else, to teach somebody else. Bruce, you, you've, you're, ra you're doing an awesome job. You've got to pull somebody up, pull somebody alongside of you and disciple them and say, I'm going to teach you how to do this too. Because when you start to do that, growth will happen like this. 
I'm telling you, growth will happen because you're making space for growth. You're raising, you're training up leaders. Men, you've got, um, do, you, do you have that folder? I want to share, this is from, and I, I, I did this. So I, I um, work with the production at our, at our church, photographers, video, things like that. And I'm working with teenagers who take photos of our church services. And every week they, te- and then I give them feedback. And I was looking through the photos this week, and I just, I just want to share. Listen, this is just a little a portion of it. She took, um, her name is Isabel. She took like 450 pictures that I had to like comb through. And I think I brought like 20 or 22. Yeah, yep. And so this is just the worship part of our service. She started snapping pictures. And so I just want you, you can kind of scroll through them, Mar, like every couple of seconds. I just want to show you, go ahead, you can go a little faster than that. Oh, it's the computer, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I know, right, how about it? Notice some of them are are standing right with their wives. But I'm showing you men that are, that have said, God, beyond anything, I want you, and I want all that you have. I'm giving you everything. I'm going to worship you with everything that I have. I'm going to serve you with everything that I have. There are, there are, we've got ex, uh, peop, you know, people that were strung out on drugs. We've got people who are business owners. We've got, you know, all sorts of people, family people. But men are standing up and saying, I'm, I'm going to lead my family. I'm going to do this. I'm going to set the pace for the church, and I'm telling you, if the men will rise up, you'll see this church explode. But it's got to start somewhere. Do you know how? Do you know why all these men, why this is happening? Do you know why men are are standing up in our church and doing this sort of thing? Like we even have teen, like teens, college guys. Do you know why that's happening? Because we've cultivated the ground. We kept cultivating, cultivating. This all started from a meeting in our pastor's garage with like four or five guys. We, we met on a Thursday morning. Every Thursday morning we would meet and just share a scripture, pray, and then start our day. We would start at 6 o'clock in the morning. And we just started doing it. And then it grew. And then it grew to like 15 people. And we're like, whoop, we got to split. We got, well, that's too big, you know. Because when it gets bigger, then you can't be intimate, right? You, can't, you won't share important things. So we split, and then we have two groups now. And now we've got two groups where almost 20 guys are meeting in each group. We've got almost 40 men, 40 men on a Tuesday morning and a Wednesday morning at 6 o'clock that meet and pray for one another and seek God. But what the beautiful thing is, in church, when, when and listen, I know that there are the women do a lot in this church, and, and you guys are strong, and that's fantastic. But what happens is it ignites the women to see the men doing this. Like, they're like, oh, hey, this is awesome. This is great. So, and I'm speaking to the men just for a second. The Lord led me to a scripture, Luke 13, 10 to 13. And I promise you, I'm ending with this, I promise. In this story... There was a woman who had an infirmity for 18 years. 18 years, the Bible says. And Jesus, you know, in that, in that day, women couldn't really speak. They had to stay on the outskirts, right? In the outs, outer part of the house, they had to stay against the wall. They couldn't be in the meeting. Jesus called her to the center of the room. And he healed her. And she didn't even ask to be healed. And verse 16 said that she was bound by Satan for 18 years. Listen, 18 years, she came, it said that she was, she was humped over, right? She was, for 18 years, she came into the church, and people would pat her on the back. How are you doing, Sister Susie? Bless the Lord. Good to see you. Nobody had recognition that she was bound and would help set her free. And Jesus called her to the center of the room. And listen. I know that it was a female. And so what, I'm, what I believe the Lord is saying is that God is saying, you might think, I'm okay out here. 
I'm all right just being in the background. I don't need to be, I don't need to be on, I don't need to be the servant of the month. I can just do whatever. But today, Jesus is calling you to the center of the room and he's saying, come be healed. Let me, let me take your heart. Let me stick the plow in, cultivate your heart, get rid of some of the rocks, plant some seed, and let's start building this thing together. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, I, right now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. God, your word, the Bible says that your word will never return void. I feel like, God, that you are calling some people out of obscurity and right into their promise. It's not about being in the limelight. It's not about being on display. It's about being a sower. You're calling people out of their rut and into the promise of being a sower. I pray, Lord, that there would be such a supernatural um, cultivation among the men of this church that if it is a year from now when I come again, Lord, that it would just uh, blow my socks off of how the men have grown. I pray, Lord, that somebody would catch it in their heart, that they would say, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start a men's uh, Bible study in the morning. It's just before work. Uh, I'm going to start it, and we'll see where it goes. God, I pray that somebody, some guy would just take a risk and take a chance. And maybe that means we do fail. Maybe we do fail sometimes. But we just keep going because we feel God wants to do something. He wants to do something. So, God, I pray for an empowerment of the men of this church in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I pray. I thank you, Lord, for all the women in this church, Lord, who, who serve so well. And they love you with all of their hearts. God, I believe what it will do is it will ignite even more in them. It will spur them to even more greater things. Oh, God, I pray this in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Um, let me just say real quick, you know, you, we have, um, when we started doing this, some guys can only stay for half an hour. Uh, when we started doing these um, in the mornings, we, we, morning is what worked. Maybe it's the evening that works. Maybe it's a Saturday morning. I don't know. Um, whatever works. But when we started doing this, some guys can only stay for half an hour, and then they've got to leave. Some people stay. You know, Junior, uh, Dan, his garage is one of the places we meet. Some people stay all day. He's got to kick them out like, I've got a job to do. you got to go. But when God starts to ignite something, when men, when, when it can, listen, it spreads like wildfire. When, when you've got a guy that's passionate about it and burns with it, and, and he says, I'm going to do something, and, and, then, and then it starts to cultivate and burn, and more and more people do it. Amen. We love you guys, and uh, we will continue to pray for you guys. Listen, love on your pastor well. When she gets back, shower her with cards and notes, things like that.